In this video we're going to be looking at some GCSE physics problems specifically on motion graphs and equations of motion. If we take a look at this graph here, this is displacement in meters against time in seconds. And let's just have a look what's going on. So from A to B, the displacement is increasing increases from 0 to 40 meters in a time of 20 seconds. Then from B to C, the displacement does not change. So that's from 20 seconds to 60 seconds, a period of 40 seconds. From C to D, the displacement is increasing, but it's increasing at, at an increasing rate, shown by the increasing gradient that is the steepness of the curve. So what this bit shows from C to D is that the velocity is increasing. The gradient seems to be quite similar in this part. So you could say that the velocity was more or less constant in this part of the curve. But this one is more pronounced, the curvature is more pronounced just here. So the velocity is, is definitely increasing there. If you compare this with A to B, the velocity is constant. So when we're talking about displacement time graphs, we, are, we need to realize that displacement is a vector. So it has a direction as well as a magnitude or size. And this means that the gradient is showing the velocity rather than the speed. The speed would be being shown by the gradient in a distance time graph, but here we're looking at velocity in the gradient. Now from D to E, the displacement is again constant, just like in B to C. And in E to F, the displacement is decreasing, which means that the velocity is negative, which means it's going back to where it, it started, to where it came from. So if we have a look now at this question, it says explain the motion between the following points. Well, we have just covered what's actually going on here. So A to C, let's just recap. This is uniform velocity. B to C is stationary. C to D is an increasing velocity going towards a somewhat constant velocity nearer to D. D to E, we have stationary object, and then E to F, we have a, a uniform velocity back to the start, or you could call that a negative velocity in relation to the positive velocity from A to B and from C to D. Then it says work out the distance from A to C. So the distance from A to C is equal to the displacement is the magnitude of the displacement. So we can see it's gone up, gone from zero to 40, so it's traveled 40 meters. And it doesn't travel any further going to C, so therefore it's 40 meters in total. Part E, what's the speed between E to F? Well, the speed between E to F is calculated here using velocity as the change in displacement divided by the change in time. Speed is change in distance divided by change in time. In this case, speed and velocity can be considered to be the same. So this is equal to 150 So just looking at where this 150 comes from, this is 150 displacement here and it's going back to the start at zero. So from E to F there is 150 meters traveled in terms of distance and then it's in a time period of from 160 to 200 seconds so you have to take the difference between those two for the change in time and this results in 3.75 meters per second part f what's the total distance traveled so the total distance you have 40 meters no no more here from B to C, then from C to D, you're going up 
to 150 meters so that is in total 150 meters and then you can start coming back so it's 150 time uh, plus 150 gives you 300. What's the total displacement? Well displacement yes you've gone out 150 meters but you've come back 150 meters so they cancel out in terms of displacement so you end up way back where you started so the total displacement is actually zero even though you've actually traveled a certain distance in the end you could assume that you haven't gone anywhere and that's what the total total displacement means part h average speed between a to f now here's a and here's f so the average speed is your average distance your total distance rather divided by the time it's taken to do, to, to to travel that total distance so the total distance is 300 meters and the total time taken to travel that distance is 200 seconds so that gives you 1.5 meters per second you don't have to calculate the individual speeds at each time you just do the average speed with the total distance divided by the total time the average velocity between a to e average velocity rather than speed well this is the displacement the total displacement divided by time so this is the velocity in one direction right so we're saying oh it's gone out and then it comes back again so what's the what's the total displacement out is 150 the total displacement back in is also 150 but going one way it's 150 and it's done it in 160 seconds so it's got to point e it's stopped here and here so the average velocity in one direction is 0.94 meters per second and we put a direction there's also got to be with a velocity there's always got to be a speed a magnitude and a direction solve the following problems by sketching speed time or distance time graphs or by using a suitable motion equation so we could sketch or we could use a suitable motion equation so what I've done here is just use a suitable motion equation. Question one, a bird flies 200 meters in 10 seconds. What is the average speed? So it's the total distance divided by the total time. 200 meters divided by 10 seconds gives 20 meters per second. A snail crawling at five millimeters per second travels two meters along a wall. How long does this take? So we rearrange the equation. Here's our formula. We rearrange it for time. Total distance divided by average speed gives 2 divided by 5 times 10 to the minus 3, 400 seconds. Rocket powered by a, so, a solid fuel motor has only enough fuel for a 25 second flight. If the average speed of the rocket during such a flight is 200 meters per second, how far does the rocket move before it runs out of fuel? Distance is average speed multiplied by time. 200 times 25 is 5,000 meters. Four, a car accelerates steadily from 15 meters per second to 25 meters per second in five seconds. What is the average speed of the car? So the average speed is the final speed plus the initial speed divided by two. 25 plus 15 divided by two gives 20 meters per second. Part B, what is the acceleration of the car? Acceleration is the change in velocity so the final speed minus the initial speed divided by the time 25 minus 15 divided by 5 gives 2 meters per second squared and meters per second squared being the unit of acceleration five a car accelerates steadily from rest at four meters per second squared for three seconds find its final velocity so its final velocity we know oh that's that's five b let's go to five a its final velocity 
is u plus at. So v equals u plus at. This is one of the SUVAT equations. So that's 0 plus 4 times 3 equals 12 meters per second. 5b, what's its average velocity? So its average velocity, you do the final velocity plus the initial velocity divided by 2 gives 12 plus 0 divided by 2 is 6 meters per second. So always show formula, working or substitution, answer unit. Find the distance it has travelled. So distance is speed times time. We can use this equation because it's got constant velocity. Or we're using the average velocity, right? So it's either the average or if it's constant. So 6 times 3 is 18 metres. Question 6. A lorry brakes to a stop from a velocity of 20 metres per second in 4 seconds. Find A, the acceleration of the lorry. Acceleration, change in speed divided by time. 0 minus 20 divided by 4 gives minus 5 metres per second squared. B, the deceleration of the lorry. So the deceleration is the negative of the acceleration. So negative negative 5 is plus 5 metres per second squared. C, the distance travelled whilst braking. Distance is average speed divided by t uh, multiplied by time. So the average speed is u plus v, that is the initial speed plus the final speed, divided by 2, multiplied by t. Notice that you can either write u plus v or v plus u, it doesn't matter which way round that is. However, it does matter when you do v minus u, it has to be that way round. So v plus u or u plus v over 2 times t is 20 minus 0 over 2 times 4, which gives 40 metres. Question 7. Lottie, a cat, accelerates at 3 metres per second squared from a velocity of 4 metres per second to a velocity of 8 metres per second. Sketch a graph of her motion and use it to find how far she has travelled during the acceleration. Well, you can have a go at sketching a graph, see if you can do that. And all I've done here is just put used a, a motion equation because um, I don't have much space here. So I just use v squared equals u squared plus 2as, therefore 8 squared equals 4 squared plus 2 times 3 seconds. Therefore, s, which is the distance travelled, is 8 metres. Question 8. A motorcyclist accelerates from 15 metres per second with an acceleration of 5 metres per second squared for 3 seconds. How far does he travel during the acceleration? Use s equals ut plus a half at squared, another SUVAT equation, equals 15 times 3 plus a half times 5 times 3 squared equals 67.5 metres. Question 9. A dragster accelerates from rest at 20 metres per second over a distance of 50 metres. What is the acceleration of the dragster? Use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Therefore, 20 squared equals 0 squared plus 2a times 50. When you're doing these SUVAT equations, you always need to make sure that you choose one that you have all the variables for, and you apart from the one that you're trying to find out. And so if you just have one unknown, you can use one equation. If you have more than one unknown, well, that's going into more AS level. Therefore, the acceleration equals four meters per second squared. For how long did the dragster accelerate? V equals U plus AT. Therefore, 20 equals 0 plus 40, so time is 5 seconds. Question 10. At the start of a race, a power boat accelerates from rest with an acceleration of 4 metres per second squared, covering a distance of 8 metres during the acceleration. How long does the acceleration take? Use s equals ut plus a half at squared. Therefore, 8 equals 0 plus a half times 4 times t squared. Therefore, t equals 2 seconds. Question 11. A train decelerates from 20 metres per second at 4 metres per second squared over a distance of 25.5 metres. What is the final velocity of the train? v squared equals u squared plus 2as. v squared equals 20 squared plus 2 times minus 4 multiplied by 25.5. y minus 
4 because it's decelerating. Therefore, V equals 14 meters per second. 12. A car accelerates from rest at 3 meters per second squared for 4 seconds. How far has it traveled? S equals UT plus a half AT squared equals 0 plus a half times 3 times 4 squared gives 24 meters. 13. A stone is dropped from a cliff. How far will it have fallen in 4 seconds? Use S equals UT plus a half AT squared equals 0 plus half times 9.81 times 4 squared equals 78.5 meters. B. What will its velocity be at that point? Use V equals U plus AT equals 0 plus 9.8 times 4 equals 39.24 meters per second. C. What is the average velocity during the 4 seconds? Use the average velocity equals the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by 2 equals 0 plus 39.24 divided by 2 equals 19.6 meters per second. 14. Starting from rest, a car travels for 2 minutes with a uniform acceleration of 0 0.3 meters per second squared, after which its speed is kept constant until the car is brought to rest with a uniform deceleration of 0 0.6 meters per second squared. If the total distance travelled is 4,500 metres, how long did the journey take? So for this one, we just need to split the question up and we need to do it in a few stages. So first of all, we say that use V1 as the, 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 after the first stage, the final velocity equals U plus 80. So 0 plus 0 0.3 multiplied by 120 is 36 metres per second. So that's the first stage. And the distance travelled in that first stage, you find by ut plus a half at squared, so this could be your s, s equals ut plus a half at squared in the general formula, equals 0 plus a half times 0 0.3 times 120 squared, which is 2160 metres. Then you say, okay, then what's the, the final, final velocity? We use v squared equals u squared plus 2as u squared equals 36 squared plus 2 times minus 0.6 times s, therefore s equals 1080 meters. Then use v equals u plus at, 0 equals 36 plus minus 0 0.6 times t minus 0 0.6 because it's decelerating here, therefore time is 60 seconds. So the total time is 120 plus 35 plus 60 gives 215 seconds. Stage two is here. You can see that I went straight from stage one to stage two. Sorry about that. So the total time after you've done this bit is 215 seconds. 15. The highway code says that at 20 meters per second, the reacting or thinking distance of driver is 14 meters. And with the brake steady on, it takes three seconds to hold the car. So 15, what is the reaction time in this case? So time, distance divided by the average speed, 14 divided by 20, 0 0.7 seconds. Plot a velocity time graph for these data. So here's the velocity on here, and here's the time. You just need the important numbers. So here's a velocity of 20. That's this 20 up here. And then it goes for 0 0.7 seconds, as you've calculated here, before he puts the brakes on and comes back down to a stop between 0 0.7 and 3.7. Because it takes three seconds to hold the car, so it's three seconds between that 0 0.7 and 3.7. Use the graph to estimate the speed at which the driver would hit a wall three seconds after first noticing it. So acceleration is delta v divided by t, that's the change of speed divided by time, equals minus 20 divided by 3, change of velocity I should say, which is v minus 20 divided by 2.3, therefore v equals 4.7 meters per second. t calculates total stopping distance, so it's this area plus this area, so it's 20 times 0 0.7, which is this area, plus the area of this triangle, 
which is a half times 3 times 20. Half times base times height. Because 14 plus 30, 44 metres. Finally, 16. A sports car accelerates from rest at 4 metres per second squared for 5 seconds, then at a constant velocity shifts gear for 1 second to accelerate a further 5 seconds at 4 metres per second squared. Determine the final velocity. So stage 1, V equals U plus AT, 0 0.4 times 5, 20 metres per second. And then V equals U plus AT, 20 plus 4 times 5, 40 metres per second. What's the total distance travelled based on velocity time graph? Here's your velocity time graph. So you've got this distance plus this distance plus this distance. Distance equals a half times 5 times 20. That's the first stage. Second stage, 20 times 6. It's this stage. And the third stage is the area of this triangle here. A half times base, which is 11 minus 6, which is 5, times 20, between 40 and 20. Um, so note here that there is no velocity in this stage 2. That's why there's no stage 2 here, 20 times 6.